Hi and welcome back. In the last video, you saw how to install ISP Manager. In this video, let's do a brief overview of ISP Manager so you can see what it looks like. So that is the dashboard. It will show you the details about your server and it will also give you links for various things. And then you can see how your server resources are being consumed. So everything you need to do on your panel will be right here. Some of these links will not be available depending on the user. If you're not the root user, that is the super user, then some of this will not be available. Under sites, this is where you're going to see all the sites that have been added on your panel. This will be where you can add a website. If you need to add a new site, need to edit a site, all the options you're going to find here. And we'll see how to do this at some point. And then databases, of course, this is where you can manage your databases. You can create a database. You can also add database servers, but that's tutorial for another time. Something that we're going to do is, of course, we'll see how we can create a database and then access the database via phpMyAdmin. We're going to look at that at some point. And then mail, this is where you'll find your mail settings. You can create a mailbox. You can create mail domains. All this will be here. You can edit all the mail items right there. And then SSL certificates, if you generate certificates, if you need to use them, you'll find your certificates here. All the details for your certificates will be here. You can generate Let's Encrypt certificate. You can also buy certificates from ISP Manager on your account. So you can look at that when you log into your ispmanager.com account. Domain names, DNS settings, you can set up DNS here. When you create a new website, of course, you'll need DNS settings to let the internet know where people should go to when they visit the domain. And I'm going to show you how you can set up domain on Cloudflare. And I'm also going to see if I can do a tutorial for how to set up a private uh, name server system whereby you can use your domain as the DNS provider as your name servers. And then if you need to set up cron jobs, that will be here. You can see the current cron jobs which are here. You can also click there and you can create a new cron job. Backup. The backup module is not configured, but you can handle your backup here. You can set up your backup right there. And we're going to see how to do that at some point. And then the file manager. The file manager, of course, this is where you can upload files. You can download files. You can compress your files. All that you can do on a browser using the file manager for ISP manager. And then users, users, we are going to create a user. And this is important because if you want to run a website, you're running a website publicly, you should definitely use a user with less privileges to create their resources like websites, DNS settings, and so on, mail, all that you should do using a normal user. And we're going to see how we can create a user. So here under users, something else that's important is templates. So templates is like rules that you're going to set up and give to your different users for example you want a particular user group to only have 10 domains or only one domain two databases three emails that's something you can do under templates and we're going to see how we can do that and then ftp users of course you know what this is if you need to access your files via ftp you can set up an ftp user with their credentials and then use those credentials to send files to your server and then modules if there's anything that you want to add that is not available something that you want to use you can look at modules and see which one is appealing to you just make sure that you read all the information about this because some of them are paid you can always read more about this from the documentation or you can contact the isp manager support if you have any questions about things like this and then let's come down to settings now here under settings there are lots of things but let's cover this because most of these as the root user or as the super user are very important so let's start with web server settings. Here under web server settings, just go through all this. You can see here you can enable HTTP2. You should definitely enable that. And then all these others, if there's anything that you don't understand here, you can always just uh, copy the name, put it on Google, and then try to understand what it is and what are the implications of anything that you're doing here. And then system settings, you can see my server already has a server name this is taken from my host name you can change this host name as well on your server via ssh and i do have a video for changing server host name and then if you need to change the time zone your region your location your server time all this you can change you can change all these settings here and then if you want to update the software automatically 
you can check that definitely leave this to automatic update update sp manager products update all system packages you can also allow that and this is going to update your server software as well so you can check that and then the update branch you can change this to stable or beta but of course you want it to remain unstable if you're running this in production in case you contact support on isp manager you can always grant access to the isp manager support just click there to enable that and you can ensure that the passwords that are used on your isp manager panel will be strong and then log rotation how many days do you want to keep the logs you can change that there now software configuration this is one that is important let's look at it right now you can see these are what's running on our server anything that's running has that active if something is not running you can also enable it to run so if anything here is not already installed and you click on it to enable it it will get installed and get activated let's see how you can change your server from lamp to lamp you don't want apache on your server or you want to use open light speed let's see how you can do that so if you come here under web you can click on it and then click to edit so right now you can see apache is enabled nginx is enabled open light speed cannot work if you have nginx and apache enabled so if you want to use open light speed you're going to have to uncheck nginx and you also make apache do not use and then you can enable open light speed and if it's not already installed it's going to install it and activate it so maybe you're sure that you just want to use nginx and php fpm in that case you can enable nginx and disable apache when you do that of course you have to turn on php fpm because if you don't turn this on you won't have a way to to run php applications with your nginx you can also enable page speed if you want it to improve performance for your different websites at the server level and then php composer if you have certain things you want to install such as laravel magento you can turn on php composer and then if you make any changes make sure you save in my case i'm just going to leave it as it is when you leave apache on and nginx on you will have the option to choose which one you want to use when you're creating your website so i'm just going to go back if there's anything here that you want to edit you can always edit it so here under name servers let's see what options we have you can choose the name server software that you want to use if you want to use bind or you want to use power dns or if you're going to use cloudflare you can just turn this off so that it doesn't consume any resources on your server so if you want to install php you'll have to come here under software configuration you can install or uninstall any that you don't need for instance i don't think i have anything that will need to run php 5.6 so i can just click there and that's going to delete php 5.6 if you want to add php 8.2 as well you can click there and it's going to add it and activate it if there's anything here that you want to use you can always activate it and that will make it available if you want to enable vpn on your server you can enable wireguard php settings back to php settings so if you select that you can manage extensions change the settings main settings you can look at the main settings you can change the settings here execution time max input size all that you can change right there for the main settings for your php 8.1 if you want to change it for a different php version maybe php 7.4 that's going to modify for php 7.4 as well web scripts if you need to install anything all these are available for you to install if you want to install wordpress or any other cms modules all of them will be here and you can install them through your sites once you create a website you can install any of these that are available here let's just jump all the way to panel settings so here under panel settings if you want to enable ssl for your panel you can we can do that right now i'm just going to click there on add here under ssl make sure that the domain is currently set as the server name for your isp manager and you can see mine is already set up so you can change that in your host name just go to your server ssh change the host name and then make that the name of your the name of your isp manager server and we saw that somewhere here i will give it that name of course we want to use 
let's encrypt if you have an existing certificate you can use that and you can add your certificates right here under ssl certificates and i'm going to create the certificate once i do that you'll see that a certificate has been issued for that so now if i take this link and let me open it in a private browser in a private window and you'll see that right now we have a certificate that is secure it is not a self-issued certificate you'll notice that you don't get the warning telling you that this is not secure and that is only possible if you're using a domain or a subdomain to log in if you log in via the ip you'll still get the warning administration this is important if you want to use user imports maybe you have users from another panel you can import them into your isp manager server administrators you can create administrators right now we only have root but it's advisable to create another user so if i want to edit this i can always edit it and you can make any user super user if you want to change the password you can change the password there and then the firewall so you can add any rules ports if you want to allow a specific port or you want to deny or deny for a certain ip you can do that here you can reboot your server that is under administration and then the shell client you can also run commands here if you need to do anything on the shell you don't have to log in you can just log into your panel and run what you want to run in there And you'll see that's running there and then monitoring and logs if you want to restart a service under monitoring and logs you have services you can restart if you want to restart apache you can restart apache anything you want to restart that is active you can always come in here and just restart it if you want to restart multiple things you can restart multiple things right there i'm not going to restart anything but you can restart stop or you can auto start any item that is in the list of your services and then network services have a look at this if you want to add fail to ban rules for anything you want to add fail to ban rules for nginx select nginx and then go to fail to ban rules and see what is active if none of this is active you can select enable and this is going to enable this rules this fail to ban rules for the service anything that you're running just make sure that you have the rules enabled for fail to burn so if you go back we look at fail to burn rules that's basically how you can enable any rules for any service that you're running you can see that has been enabled and that's going to enable that as well and you want to make sure that they're active so that they're being protected being monitored by fail to burn you can look at your background tasks if you have any tasks that are running in the background you can stop them right there active sessions you can see who's logged into the server right now i'm the only one logged in as root you can stop any session that you don't want logged in so you can also look at logs so the things that i've just done you can see the logs have been pushed to the top so you can check your logs right there look at the details to see what happened and then access logs as well you can see when your panel was logged into you can check that in there and then ww request logs you'll find that there there are no requests right now notifications if there are any notifications for your server you can check the notifications right there under monitoring and logs look at the documentation for more options about all this and then finally the system information our cpu is premium amd provided by DigitalOcean and then disk space all that you can find there i don't have a swap but you should probably create a swap especially if you have one or two gb ram and you're running apache make sure you have swap on your server and i do have resources for that as well for how to create a swap file on your vm and license management we did look at this at some point during the installation you can go back and watch how to activate your license how to change the ip address for your server help if you need help you can go to the documentation you can watch various video tutorials now facebook community suggest and you can also contact 
ISP Manager support on their website. That is an overview, a general overview of ISP Manager. If you're looking for a cPanel alternative, you can see what ISP Manager looks like. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel very free to let me know.